Let us start with an experiment. We're physicists, after all. So, take your thumb. Look at your thumbnail for one, two seconds. So, did you see anything? Did you feel anything special? No? That's strange. Because during those two seconds that you watched your thumbnail, about a hundred billion, that's correct, a hundred billion neutrinos went straight through your, your thumbnail. You didn't see them. You didn't feel them. In fact, while they were going through your body, they also go straight through the Earth. They also go straight through uh, the Sun. Our neutrinos are weird particles. They go through a lot of material. So let us talk about these uh, neutrinos. Let us see what they particularly are. They are elementary particles. Elementary particles meaning they are among the fundamental building blocks of uh, matter, the elementar, fundamental building blocks of the universe. Now, elementary particles, you would think that they come only in the big laboratories of the particle physicists. Those laboratories deep underground that are full of very expensive and very complicated um, uh, equipment. You're right. That's where they were discovered. That's where we study them. But what I'm going to do now is to tell you about an experiment that looks outside, that uses these elementary particles and tries to learn something about the universe from them. Now, they're elementary particles. And you all know the elementary particles. They, they belong in the same category as quarks, as electrons, as the famous Brouton-Glaire Higgs particle that was discovered just two years ago. So, yes, we study them in the laboratory. The neutrinos were introduced in the 1930s to explain some aspects of nuclear radioactivity. And they're very, very hard to detect. It took us until 1956 to actually detect, observe these particles. Now, they are produced in massive amounts in a lot of places. Most of the neutrinos that actually went through your uh, body, they come from the sun. The sun is a huge producer of neutrinos. But they also are produced in nuclear reactors. They are produced in other stars. They are produced in the Big Bang. And we can see, we can try to see all these neutrinos with our experiments. Now, what makes these neutrinos so strange, so different from all the other elementary particles? Well, just look at this. If I want to stop a light, I just take a piece of paper and the light is stopped. Light are also elementary particles. We call them photons. Now, just a piece of paper of one millimeter will stop the light. Even the worst radioactive, um, the worst radioactive uh, radiation will be stopped by one meter of concrete, not neutrinos. You need literally billions of kilometers of concrete to stop them. You fill the whole space between here and the next star, you fill it with concrete, and you will still have neutrinos going through it. That's why they are called the ghost particles. They go through everything. Now, where do they come from? Well, most of them come from the sun. That's what we see here. Now, if you go to a slightly higher energy, where the sun doesn't produce neutrinos anymore, these neutrinos can also come from the atmosphere. When cosmic rays coming from the cosmos hit the atmosphere, they produce, among other particles, they produce neutrinos. So if you look at the sky, if you look at the universe with neutrinos, what you see is the sun. And then the whole atmosphere is lighting up with neutrinos. It's just like when you go outside and you look at the sky during the day. You see the sun and then you see all the light from the atmosphere. So, what was the title of the talk again? Neutrino astronomy. We want to do astronomy. Well, if you want to do astronomy, if you want to look at the stars, you don't do that during the day. Why not? Because there's the sun, there's the atmosphere, and you don't see the stars. The light from the stars is overwhelmed by the light from the sun and from the atmosphere. And that's equally true for neutrinos. The neutrinos from the stars are completely overwhelmed by the neutrinos from the sun, and from the neutrinos from the atmosphere. So how do you do astronomy? Well, you do it at night, when the sun is 
at the other side of the Earth, when there is no light coming from the atmosphere. That's when you see the stars. So now imagine you want to do this with neutrinos. You have a problem. Why do you have a problem? Because these neutrinos, they are not stopped by the Earth. Neutrinos, the sun will shine equally bright in neutrinos during the night as it does during the day. During the day, it will be up there in the sky. During the night, it's down there below the Earth. But the neutrinos come through the Earth and you still cannot see the stars. So we have a problem. Neutrino astronomy is not possible. Not during the day, not during the night. There is, however, one solution. You go to very, very high energy neutrinos. Neutrinos that go almost at speed of light with a very, very high energy. Those neutrinos cannot be produced in the sun. They cannot be produced in normal stars. Normal stars, like our sun, are well-behaved objects. They produce neutrinos, they produce light, but at a very low energy. Enough of it to heat the Earth, but at a low energy. And the same is true for the neutrinos coming from the atmosphere. But at the very, very highest energies, they stop. They are not produced anymore. And the only place where you could find them is in the universe. So let's go and see where they come from. What you see here is a galaxy. It's the galaxy M87. Well, don't blame me for the name. It's a fairly typical galaxy, except for one thing. There's a jet of material shooting out from the galaxy. You see it from the galaxy shooting up to the upper right corner. It's material that is emitted from this galaxy at very, very high speeds, almost at speed of light. Let's look at a close-up. The galaxy's center in the, is in the lower left of the plot, and you see this jet of material spewed out by something in the center of this galaxy. So what's happening there? We believe, now this is an artist's impression, we believe that in the center of this galaxy you have a hugely massive, supermassive black hole that is eating all the material that is falling up uh, into it. Now, black holes are very messy eaters, and occasionally they spit out some of the things they uh, want to swallow. And that's this jet of material going out. It's one of the most violent environments in the universe. Or consider this. This is a wolf Rayet star in our galaxy. The star is in the center, the uh, bright uh, blob in the center. And around the star you have a whirling amount of uh, very hot gas clouds, dust and so on. Now this is a very massive star, many times more massive than our sun. And soon it will come to the end of its life. And we believe that at the end of its life it will go into a big explosion. Again, this is an artist's impression of what we believe it to be a gamma ray burst. A gamma ray burst is the explosion of a supermassive star. In the few seconds that the gamma ray burst exists, it will outshine the rest of the universe put together. Now, these are really violent environments. So, why did I say we believe that these things are uh, so? Why do I show artist impressions of that thing? Because we don't really know. We cannot really see the central engine where everything happens. Because there's all this dust, all this gas is around there. We cannot penetrate with light through it. And that's where neutrinos come in. They penetrate through all this dust and dirtiness around uh, the central engine. And we can see the central engine with the uh, neutrinos. So you want to do that. But of course, neutrinos don't interact. They hardly ever interact. So what you need is a huge detector to have a tiny little chance of detecting one of those neutrinos. So we went to a huge detector uh, volume the, at the South Pole. The South Pole sits on 3,000 meters of ice, very, very clear ice. It's the most transparent material on Earth. And then, in that ice, the neutrinos come in, and sometimes one in a million of these neutrinos will give a tiny flash of light and that we can detect, and that tells us there was a neutrino there. So you need to observe these flashes of light in uh, the ice. So what we did was go to the South Pole, drill about 100 holes, 2,500 meters deep, and at the lowest kilometer, 2,000 meters deep, you put 5,000 and more very sensitive light sensors that observe this tiny flash of light from the neutrino, and then you see that. We have done this over the last uh, five to seven years with an international collaboration um, where people went to the South Pole, drilled holes, installed the light sensors, and since 2011 we are taking data with that. We are observing the cosmos with neutrinos, with the weirdest telescope you can imagine, buried 2,000 meters deep in the ice, 
at the most inhospitable place on earth at the South Pole. So you go and look at those uh, neutrinos. We have to look at the very highest energy neutrinos, those that have enormous energy, and they deposit a lot of energy in the eyes. This tiny flash of light you could actually see with your naked eye if you would be buried in the eyes. Nice experiment, but probably not to be repeated. So we look at the data that come from the eyes, and then after two years of data taking, we saw for the first time these two events. Those are big blobs of light. Every tiny circle that you see is one of our light sensors, and it shows how much light is observed in that sensor. And you see many of our sensors have uh, fired, have seen the light from the neutrino. The one on the left is called BERT. The one on the right is called Ernie. Don't blame me, I'm not responsible for the name of these uh, two. There's also Big Bird, and there's a few more. So these are the highest energy particles ever seen. So to give you an idea, this is Bird superimposed over Ghent. It fits nicely between the coupure and the Leyen. But it extends up to one kilometer above us. So if you would see the flash of a neutrino traversing the ice, you would really look up in the sky and you would see everything lighting up. So that's burn. That's a big, big event. So since we discovered those two events, we have seen a few more. In total, we have now seen about 40. Now you're disappointed. We have seen 40 of those very high energetic neutrinos. But what is the fun? For each and every one of these neutrinos, we know they come from outer space. They don't come from the sun. They don't come from our atmosphere. They come from somewhere in the universe. They come from one of those active galactic nuclei, like M87. They come from one of those gamma ray bursts. But we don't know which one yet. 40 is not enough. We see about 10 of those events every year. That's it. But slowly we are accumulating evidence. For the first time here, we see a new window in the universe. This is not looking at the universe with a telescope, not even with a radio telescope, not even with bicep. This is looking at the universe with entirely new things, with neutrinos. This is the birth of a new astronomy. We will hope, and we are sure, that we will soon be able to tell you from where exactly they come from and why they were produced with those enormous energies at these particles, at these uh, uh, places. So look again at your thumb. You didn't see anything. No, that's your thumb. If you want to go to neutrinos, you need a cubic kilometer of ice. If you want to do neutrino astronomy, you'd better start thinking big. Thank you. <laughs>